Welcome to the State of Ohio. I'm Karen Kassler. For nearly two years, the Ohio Department of Education and the state's largest online charter school were locked in a battle over funding for students. And this week brought the culmination of that fight in the Ohio Supreme Court as attorneys for the now closed Electronic Classroom of Tomorrow and ODE traded jabs over how the state should fund schools and if that funding should be tied to just enrollment or student participation as well. State House correspondent Andy Chow reports. As the arguments were starting, a small group of ECOT supporters gathered outside of the Ohio Judicial Center to share their stories of how the online charter school helped them. There was Heather Steven, a mother of three ECOT students. Uh, every opportunity that my kids could have in a brick and mortar, they have at ECOT, and then some. While high school Spanish teacher Kelly Dyer reflects on her connection with students. I can't tell you what a difference I've made with kids and the relationships that I've built. Uh, it's, it's amazing. And then there's Evelyn Bateman, who dreamed of graduating from what was the state's largest online charter school before it closed. But those dreams have been disrupted because to the Ohio Department of Ruining Education, money and politics weigh heavier than education. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. But inside the judicial center was a different story. The attorneys fighting before the Ohio Supreme Court weren't debating the impact the school had on students or teachers. Instead, they had one question to answer. Should the school's funding be tied to attendance and participation or just enrollment? The state says ECOT owes back at least $80 million for students it claimed were enrolled at the online charter school but couldn't be verified. Representing ECOT was Marion Little, who argued that funding for the school should be based on enrollment, not daily attendance or participation, which he is says is the standard for traditional brick and mortar schools. Oh, absolutely, Your Honor. In a traditional school, there is no measurement of duration whatsoever. Funding is premised solely upon enrollment. It doesn't matter whether the student goes to school, it doesn't matter whether the student is sick, delinquent, and engaged whatsoever, um, there is no consequence to a brick and mortar school. But Doug Cole with the Ohio Department of Education says state law clearly spells out the connection between full-time equivalency, which is to say student Chief participation, Department, the court. and funding. Uh, the Ohio Department of Education asks this court to apply the funding statute according to its plain language. Full stop. That is what we ask. Contrary to ECOT's arguments, it is ECOT, not the department, that asks this court to ignore or rewrite statutory text. And it is ECOT, not the department, who is seeking to impose its own policy preferences onto the language that the General Assembly crafted. In 2015, the Education Department reviewed ECOT's claim that it had 15,000 students enrolled and found that ECOT could only verify about 40 percent of the full-time students they said they had. This was after a long dispute over whether the school was required to hand over student login information. That review, and a subsequent one a year later, resulted in the state deciding to claw back a total of $80 million. This sapped ECOT's funding. The school closed last month after ECOT's sponsor voted unanimously to suspend its charter. As many as 12,000 students and hundreds of staff and faculty were affected. Little, arguing for ECOT, told the court that Ohio law bases funding off of enrollment, not duration of student participation, which led Chief Justice Maureen O'Connor to ask, The testimony was, even if a student does not attend, ECOT is still entitled to the full per capita. That would be the testimony of all witnesses under an enrollment methodology. But okay, let me ask you, stop. How is that not absurd? Um, I, how is it absurd that... How is it not absurd? Well, I don't think it's absurd because there are other ways of testing whether or not a community school is discharging its responsibility. So we make a distinction between how is funding done plus then how are schools evaluated. Little went on to say that state school report cards are another way to test if a school is teaching its kids. It should be noted that ECOT has consistently received F's on its report cards. Another argument from ECOT is that ODE went years only basing their full-time equivalency review off of teacher certification records, but then suddenly raised the bar to include student login information. 
and ECOT says that was done retroactively. Cole hit back, using the same word that Chief Justice O'Connor used, quote, absurd, saying the law requires students to have a certain number of hours of learning and that schools should expect to prove that. I liken it to uh, if, if um, the IRS on your tax return, uh, you list a bunch of expenses and the IRS doesn't ask to see the receipts and then all of a sudden after not asking to see the receipts for three years, they say, well, you've listed these expenses, we'd love to see the receipts. And you say, receipts? Nobody said anything about receipts. There was no mention in the arguments of Bill Logger, the founder of ECOT, who has taken in around $200 million as a vendor of operational and software support for the school. He's also donated millions to the Republican Party and its candidates over the years, including Justices Terrence O'Donnell and Pat DeWine, who did not recuse themselves from the case. Two previous court decisions have backed the state's case. Rulings by the Supreme Court usually take between four to six months. Andy Chow, State House News Bureau.